Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome friends to this last and concluding lecture uh, of this course and in this lecture today we are going to uh, revisit some of the themes and um, concepts that we have covered over the course of um, 29 uh, lectures. So, uh, in this lecture basically I will be um, looking at uh, what is the role of political theory, why do we need it? and um, um, what are the subject matters of politics and how that subject matters and indeterminate nature of uh, that subject matter requires political theory to develop new concepts, methods and approaches to deal with the changing uh, circumstances, issues and concerns. So, the main subject matter of political theory is the political. And the question of political is something which cannot be fixed, which cannot be uh, defined once and for all. So, in different uh, societies, in different contexts, depending upon different socio-economical and historical circumstances, the nature of politics differs and then uh, the approach, the concerns and the methods of political theory should also respond accordingly. So, uh, we will relook at some of these uh, debates, then we will uh, focus on the relationship between political theory and political ideology and what kind of theory we need to explain or engage with um, real world or the practical world in contrast to say uh, a normative theorization or a contemplative exercise um, in political thought or political philosophy. So, we will focus on that uh, relationship between political theory and political ideology by looking at different um, uh, kinds of political theory and how in contrast to that political ideology is something which deals with uh, change in the power, aspire to acquire power and it has a particular world view which may not be open, which not, may not be flexible. So, uh, that point we will discuss and then finally, we will very briefly discuss some of the key concepts before we uh, move on to discuss the um, possible new direction in political theory and then we will conclude today's lecture. So, uh, to begin with the task and why do we need uh, political theory, the answer to that question is that it help us understand, theorize, critique and resolve multiple normative as well as the practical challenges and predicaments of the political. So, the significance of political theory lies in the fact that it enables us, it gives us resources, tools, concepts and methods to understand what is political, that means what is going on in the social political realm, how it is going to affect our life, what is our role to change the course of politics in a given society. So, political theory provides us the tools uh, and concepts to make sense of or to understand what is political. It also enables us then to interpret or to theorize what is going on. So, the question is uh, that it gives us tools, concepts to understand what is going on that is the descriptive thing, uh, one can understand what is going on and then why it is going on can also be uh, answered by using the tools and methods of political theory. So, it help us understand what is going on and why it is going on that is theorizing of it and then finally, it also gives us enough normative ideals or viewpoints to criticize what is going on and then we can 
uh, be in a position to change or transform what is going on. So, the task of political theory or the significance of political theory is in the fact that it helps us understand, theorize, critique and also resolve many of the uh, normative as well as the practical challenges and predicaments of the political. And this uh, political is something which is not fixed, which keeps on changing. There are always new changes, new issues, new concerns in the political. Now, in this changing or constant changing nature of the political, how political theory adopts new methods, new approaches, new concepts is something that we need to be aware of. So, in the last lectures, we have discussed that how environmental challenges pose a serious challenge uh, to political theory in terms of theorization about justice, equality, freedom and so on. So, the indeterminate nature of the political makes the study of political theory even more fascinating. So, why political theory as a discipline, as a subject of a study is interesting or fascinating is perhaps its uh, uh, contribution in helping us understand uh, the political which keeps on changing. There is no uh, fixed understanding or interpretation of political because its issues, the concerns keeps on changing and that change is constant. And therefore, political theory constantly try to understand, make sense of, theorize, critique or also provide normative uh, tools to transform, to change um, uh, the political. So, that makes the study of political theory a very fascinating study or a very fascinating area of study. It has come a long way from its obsession with the normative question. So, normative questions you I hope know by now deals with the question of the uh, uh, should be or ought to be. So, suppose normative theory will deals with the question that is uh, by and large in the realm of ideal, what ought to be done, what should be the ideal society, what should be the ideal polity, what should be the ideal understanding of democracy, what should be the ideal uh, justice and so on. So, these are some of the issues or the questions that relates with the normative political theory where you speculate where you contemplate about the ideal world, you contemplate about the ideal polity and so on and so forth. So, uh, for a very long time, political theory was obsessed with some of these normative questions and concerns and therefore, many scholars in fact in, uh, began to question the very uh, relevance of political theory as a discipline because it deals with the question which is normative which deals with the idea of what ought to be done or what should be done rather than political or politics which is understood as a pragmatic science. Its subject matter is the real issue not what ought to be, but what is. So, the question of what is cannot be dealt with adequately by normative political theory and uh, this critique um, uh, put some kind of challenge to the very uh, relevance or significance of political theory as a discipline. So, political theory now in contemporary times has come a long way from its obsessive um, concern with normative questions or issues to engage with the practical and the real issues. So, it deals with the practical or the real issues of the people or a society or a community that they are facing and it tries to explain, theorize and provide normative tools to understand or transform it. So, now political theory as a discipline no longer confined to the normative questions or normative concerns, but it actually tries to engage with many of the practical or the pragmatic questions of the real world and then it help us to explain and understand them. Now, what is the characteristic of political theory which is very different from say politics in India or politics in United States or pol politics in Great Britain. It is its uh, distinctive feature that when it engages with the real pragmatic world, it is not limited to that. What makes political theory distinct from uh, say Indian politics is its uh, ability to engage with the real empirical pragmatic problem, but also transcend it 
and produce some generalized uh, sense or theory that can be applicable to understand or explain and interpret other societies as well. So, that degree of generality and political theory where it is no longer obsessed only with the normative concern, it engages with the practical empirical problem, but it is not limited to that. It also transcends that practical, real, empirical world to produce a degree of generalized statement which then can be used or applied to explain other societies and other community. So, that is the distinctive feature of uh, political theory in contemporary times. So, one of the very distinctive development in political theory is that normative concerns remain the major issue, but it is no longer the obsession with political theory. That means, it is not just dealing with the normative questions concerns, but it also deals with the real pragmatic practical challenges. And in doing so, it also produces some kind of generality that defines political theory as a discipline which is distinct from say Indian politics or politics in United States and so on. Now, we have also discussed in uh, the first lecture basically the three kinds of political theory, explanatory, normative and contemplative. Now, all these three kinds of uh, political theory has distinct contribution in understanding or explaining political in any society. So, the uh, nature of explanatory political theory is to explain, to describe the politics in any society. So, it explanatory political theory help us understand or explain uh, politics in any society. In contrast to explanatory political theory, uh, the normative political theory engages with uh, the question of ought to be or what should be done. So, those uh, normative concerns and questions still is helpful in uh, not just understanding what is going on, but what should be going on. So, uh, the um, task of political theory is not just uh, to help us understand what is going on but also to give us to provide certain normative concerns which will enable us to develop our judgment about politics and that judgment about politics requires certain moral, ethical value orientation towards politics and expectations from it and what one should expect from one's political system and in expecting that what is the obligation of that person to the politics and so on. So, these questions also require some kind of normative understanding of politics and not merely the explanatory descriptive understanding of politics. So, the normative political theory deals with the normative questions to not just understand the politics, but also how to transform it, how to change it or so on. Now, the third kind of political theory is contemplative, which is uh, something which was criticized, but again there is uh, this strong uh, tradition in political theory which derives from political philosophy or political thought to um, deal with political not in a very objective empirical manner of explaining the thing or just by having some kind of normative orientation, but also to contemplate and this contemplation uh, or thinking uh, is a very essential part of political theory to understand what is going on uh, or what is the possible direction of politics in any uh, society. Now, question of this nature require not just the available facts or the collection of existing uh, facts and figures, but it also requires certain uh, reflection, certain contemplation and speculation about what is going on, why it is going on and what would be the possible direction in the future of politics in any given society. So, uh, scholars like Hannah Arendt and many others argue about the um, uh, requirement or a kind of necessity of having political theory also as a contemplative exercise besides explanatory or normative political theory. So, the political theory also uh, has a very a strong contemplative speculative tradition and that allows political theories to not just explain what is going on today, but what would be the possible direction of politics tomorrow, day after and so on. So, the inference 
or the prediction about future is possible through the contemplative exercise or speculative exercise of politics that is also very methodological task. So, political theory is also then a contemplative exercise. So, the basically we have these three kinds of political theory explanatory, normative and contemplative. Now, the another feature of political theory is that it is a rational exercise. So, the argumentation in political theory is done in a rational, logical, coherent manner. So, while explaining the society or while providing a critique to the politics in any society, uh, the argument must follow certain logic, certain reason or rationality and that distinguish uh, political theory say from political ideology or those who are the political ideologues. They also explain the society, they also interpret the society, but they uh, are guided by certain ideology that gives them a particular value orientation towards politics, society and so on. So, they also explain the society, politics and so on, but the political theory as a discipline tries to explain or theorize uh, the politics in any society in a very rational, logical manner and we will see how it is distinct from political ideology and their use of reason or logic. So, it is a rational exercise that is inherently hermeneutic and critical. That is a distinguished feature of political theory and hermeneutics means a science of interpretation. So, political theory say some of the concepts that we have done uh, equality, rights, uh, liberty, justice, power, state, sovereignty and so on, it provides us um, uh, the tool to explain, to interpret politics in any society. So, whether that uh, politics is democratic or undemocratic, does it provide liberty to its citizen, what is the um, freedom of speech and expression in a particular community, should we have freedom of speech ex or expression or not, if we have what are the consequences, if we uh, uh, do not have what are the implication. So, uh, political theory inherently in that sense is a hermeneutic exercise that means it interprets, it enables us to interpret the politics in a society that is uh, through a rational logical manner and the critical nature of political theory provides us the resources to not just make sense of the politics, but also uh, provides some alternative, provides uh, resources to transform the existing politics. So, uh, political theory then enables us not just to understand the politics, but also understand some of the limitations of existing politics and how one can expand the domain of a politics to make it more just, to make it more democratic and so on. That requires some uh, critical understanding of politics, which also requires some normative or contemplative uh, methods and approach to politics and not just uh, using the existing uh, facts and figures to acquire power. So, the politics where power is central is not just all about acquiring power, but it is something which is more than that and political theory as a rational exercise which is hermeneutic and critical provides such tools and resources to do that. Now, if we uh, make a comparison between political theory and political ideology, what we find is that uh, political theory deals with the explanatory, normative and contemplative aspect of the political. So, basically all the three aspects of political we have just discussed, the explanatory, normative and contemplative, which is grounded in reason and rational argument. So, the Arguments in political theory proceed through reason or through logical coherent argument. So, one step should naturally leads to the another step. That is the task of political theory when it deals with the explanatory, normative or contemplative uh, aspect of the political. Whereas, in political ideology we find there is the kind of freedom or it is a kind of using reason and rationality to serve a particular purpose where we use reason when it is convenient, but we may also uh, use some other kind of argument which is not necessarily logical or rational if that is serving our objective or intention. So, in contrast to that, the 
distinctive feature of political theory that it is reasonable or uh, rational in its argumentation. So, it provides a set of concepts, methods and approaches to systematically study and analyze politics. In doing so, it tries to engage with the real and the pragmatic, but is not limited to them that it must also transcend the real or the pragmatic to produce a degree of generality which enables us to understand politics in other societies as well. So, due to its normative nature, which I said that normative is uh, something which is also a very strong aspect of a political theory, it also provides the resources for not just making sense of or understanding politics, but also to transform it. So, that is the role of uh, political theory. Now, in contrast to that, political ideology on the other hand has acquired negative connotation mostly. So, ideology as I have explained in one of my lecture uh, began as a discipline to study the ideas in a scientific objective manner. So, ideology deals with science of idea or the study of idea in a rational objective manner, but over a period of time ideology has acquired some kind of closed world view or a very rigid world view or outlook about politics, society and so on. It is a very doctrinaire kind of thing which it has become, but original um, expectation from ideology was to study ideas in a scientific, rational, objective manner. But over a period of time, it has acquired negative connotation and seen as fixed doctrinaire and closed worldview with its emphasis on the political action and capturing state power. So, whatever be uh, your ideology, the objective of that ideology is to first um, mobilize the masses according to particular worldview and in the process of such mobilization, the aim of the mobilization or political action is to acquire state power. So, whether it is the fascism, Nazism, uh, liberalism, socialism, Marxism, feminism and so on, it is uh, reduced to some kind of fixed or doctrinaire or closed world view with its emphasis on political action capturing state power. However, it also has positive aspects to it and in that sense we cannot escape ideology. So, and that is the kind of ambiguous relationship between political theory and political ideology. We all are in a way ideological, we cannot escape the ideology and ideology gives us that value, norms, ethical orientation towards the questions and concerns of politics. So, our political beliefs in particular ideology when we support some ideology, when we oppose some ideology. So, our beliefs, then when we work for certain ideology, certain kind of politics and the outlooks are shaped by ideology and therefore, ideology is something which we cannot escape and that connects the question of political ideology to political theory as well. So, ideologies are not intrinsically rational, it rather maintains a strategic relation with reason that means, ideology accepts reason only when its application can provide any specified ends or results in the practical sense. So, the relationship between reason and rationality and political ideology is not that of essential characteristic, but a kind of a strategic relation when uh, political ideologues or leaders will use reason when uh, using of it serves certain purpose, but in a political theory in contrast to that we have seen that logic and reason is the essential characteristic for uh, the progression of political arguments and so on. So, ideology in that sense is not intrinsically rational and logical. Now, political theory is uh, deeply connected with political ideology. So, there is a distinctive feature as we have seen the objective of political theory is not to acquire the power, but it provides a discursive terrain which enables political actors, institutions or parties to acquire power to develop certain debates and discourse. But political theory in itself 
uh, is not about capturing uh, political power, but political ideology, the overall objective is to not just develop political orientation or to shape people beliefs according to a particular forms of ideology, but to capture the state power. However, there is a also uh, some uh, deep connection between political theory and political ideology and the essentially contested nature of political concepts is result of this connection. So, in many of my lecture, the concepts that we have done, we have seen the essentially contested nature of these concepts. Now, this essentially contested nature is result of this connection between theory and uh, political ideology, where different scholars interpret or conceptualize the concepts in political theory uh, depending upon their ideological uh, viewpoints and outlook. So, uh, the major ideology uh, that we have discussed in the lecture is the liberalism, Marxism, socialism, feminism, nationalism, post-structuralism, ecologism and environmentalism. So, I am not going to discuss all of them in today's lecture, but these ideologies uh, provide a uh, contesting ground in the politics where on the same issue depending upon the ideological backgrounds of the activists or the parties or the political leaders, they will see and argue for a different kind of politics, different kind of uh, agendas in politics. So, liberalism emphasizes individual, individual rights, freedom of speech and expression and so on. In Marxism, they see such notions merely serving the interest of a particular property class and not for all of the society. So, they talk about stateless and politicsless uh, society, that is a kind of ideal, that is a kind of utopia in Marxism, which we uh, also know as communism. Socialism tries to avoid these extremes of liberalism or Marxism to provide some kind of balance between the two extremes. Feminism talks about the um, exclusion or marginalization of women in the neutral discourse of state and its politics and tries to uh, interrogate many um, biased even when the state and its politics claims to be neutral, it is actually biased towards the specific needs of half of the population that is women and it tries to question also the patriarchy, the family as an institution which perpetuate gender discrimination in the society, politics and ultimately in the state. Nationalism, post-structuralism, ecology and environmentalism is also different uh, kind of ideology which talks about different kind of politics and how one should participate in creating um, uh, the politics in any society and community a much more democratic, sustainable force in that particular society. So, we will discuss this slide first that is about some of the key concepts in political theory and then we will discuss the new uh, direction. So, uh, defining features of key concepts in political theory is that they are essentially contested concepts and there are a number of interpretation and conceptualization of a single or singular concept. So, we have seen how liberty, equality, justice, rights are conceptualized by different theorists in a different, different sense. So, some of the major concepts that we have uh, discussed in this course is uh, liberty, equality, rights and justice. These are regarded as the key concepts in political theory. So, you begin or you um, uh, develop a sense of politics only when you understand these um, uh, concepts um, properly and its different conceptualization and interpretations enables you to understand the politics and also develop a normative or a value oriented judgment or interpretation of a politics. So, these are the key concepts which is necessary to understand politics in any society that is liberty, equality, rights and justice. To understand modern politics, state and society in any country, in any society, you need to understand how that society, how that politics allow or function according to these principles of liberty, equality, rights and justice. Then we have done power that is the very much central uh, 
uh, issue in understanding politics. So, politics is also seen as a power game. It is about who gets what, when and how. Uh, that is the whole uh, understanding of politics which is seen merely as a power game where all the actors, parties tries to acquire power and uh, politics decides who get the power, when and how. That is determined by their participation, their manipulation or their involvement in the politics and society. So, uh, power is very much central to the understanding of politics. However, we have seen both the negative or a kind of understanding of politics which is seen, understanding of power which is seen by many scholars as a kind of domination of one over the other. But we have also seen the positive aspects of power where uh, power also enables to create some newer forms of subjectivity, newer forms of identities and it is not just about some kind of resources which is held by one against the other. But uh, in Stephen Luke's particularly and also in Michel Foucault, we have seen how power circulates in the society and everyone or his or her identity, behavior, opinion and values are shaped by that power structure. So, in uh, Stephen Luke's we have seen the three dimensional views of power starting from the top level where there is a two uh, groups contesting for power and one group prevails over the other. So, that is the most explicit uh, exercise of power where we see one win over the other. Then the second level of power is a domain where certain issues and agendas are kept outside the domain of politics and outside the domain of debates and discussion about politics. So, power works here in a less visible manner where some issues and agendas are kept out of discussion of politics. Now, power at the third level where power is most effective, but it uh, works through different networks where the consent of the ruled is acquired by the ruler, but there is no direct visible or explicit exercise of power. It works through a kind of invisible networks of power structure which shapes the opinion of the people, but it does so in a most uh, invisible uh, manner and power in this third level is more effective. In Gramsci, we have seen uh, power as a hegemony, how power is acquired which is not just through coercive manners, but through also ideological and cultural uh, resources. And Foucault and governmentality, knowledge and power, we have seen how power is uh, something which is constantly flowing in the system and it is not held by one over the other, but they are the effects of power when we see one person exercising power over others, see the relationship between doctor or the patient, teacher or the student and so on. So, we have discussed this notion of power through different understandings. So, other such uh, discussion was Talcott persons who equates power with money. So, power in a political system operates like money operates in the economic system and so on. So, we have discussed in a detailed manner a uh, different conceptualization of power which is very central to understand politics in any society. Then we have discussed the concept of state and sovereignty democracy and citizenship that is uh, key to understanding modern political organization and uh, system. So, the understanding of political system or political organization require some understanding of a state and sovereignty, uh, what is democracy and citizenship and these two concept the modern state and sovereignty we have seen that uh, sovereignty is the sovereign authority or the supreme authority within a given territory and that defines modern state. In a sense, modern state in a given territory monopolize the violence and that monopoly of violence is legitimate form of violence that comes out of the sovereign understanding of the sovereignty. So, we have uh, discussed it in details uh, different conceptualization of a state and sovereignty. Democracy is something which in modern times, in modern political discourse becomes a kind of legitimizing idea. So, even non-democratic and outright undemocratic authoritarian regimes also use the name of democracy to legitimize their undemocratic authoritarian uh, rule. And citizenship is finally about the relationship between the citizen and the state, uh, which is um, defined by T. H. Marshall 
one of the um, authoritative understanding of citizenship in modern political theory is the free and equal membership to a political community. But then we have also seen the multiculturalist and the communitarian, the feminist conceptualization of uh, citizenship which tries to extend this notion and particularly the environmental notion of citizenship is further extended the rights to the non-humans uh, to make uh, new uh, values or green values and to develop new kind of subjectivity which will lead to creation of new values, new forms of political organization and so on. So, these are some of the concepts which one needs to understand modern political organization and systems in different countries. Then political theory and environmental ethics is some new development in political theory which challenges many premises of liberalism or modern political theory and it requires political theory to revisit some of its notions such as uh, liberty, equality, justice and uh, development, uh, role of state and individual in making the environment a central issue in the political discourse and so on. So, that we have seen while we discussed uh, political theory and environmental ethics. Now, what are the new directions in political theory? So, as politics is an ever changing phenomena, so is political theory. So, the concerns issues of political theory also change depending upon the changing nature of politics. So, as I have said from the obsession with the normative questions and concerns to engage with the practical question and then also include normative and contemplative uh, aspect to it is something which political theory constantly uh, does. So, as politics or political is as ever changing phenomena, so is political theory which tries to systematically study and analyze it. In terms of methods, concepts and approaches, political theory derives excessively from western thought and philosophy. So, many concepts, theories that we discuss is largely derived from one particular tradition that is western political thought or philosophy. But there is a shift now to engage with non-western uh, traditions of political thinking including Indian, Chinese and global south to make political theory uh, truly a global discipline or political thought is also seen where uh, for a very long time there is a kind of excessive uh, reliance on a particular uh, tradition of thought uh, and thinking to make political thought and theory a truly global discipline. So, is with political theory where we now see a shift away from the excessive reliance on western political thought to engage with political theory and thinking in global south including Indian, Chinese, African and post colonial and so on. So, there is a shift not to engage with non western tradition of political thinking and to develop a dialogue with them to make political theory a global discipline. So, the concerns of political theory are also accommodative of new changes and developments. So, first humans are no longer the only exclusive concerns for political theory. So, no longer we have human being as the center of uh, political explanation or political discourse. Increasingly, particularly after the environmental crisis or debates on climate change which requires uh, different notions of justice understanding of rights which is not just about individual rights or human beings right but also non-human or even uh, rights of mountains, rivers and so on. And in many modern democracy tries to extend the rights also to the non-humans such as animal rights or uh, say uh, rights of the mountains, rights of uh, ecology or ecosystem or uh, rivers and so on. So, they now have to increasingly take into account non-human factors such as animal rights, climate, environment and so on. So, uh, the uh, focus of political theory is not exclusively human, but it also includes many non-human factors such as animal rights, climate and environment as well. So, uh, further on developments in genetic studies can potentially alter the major premises of uh, concepts like equality, liberty and justice. So, genetic studies uh, or technological development which leads to uh, some contestation 
over this uh, normative concern of equality, justice, freedom and uh, so on. Similarly, there is no definite answer to the question of liberty or justice. It is need to be explained contextually and historically as well. So, the political theory no longer claims to be abstract or being abstract universal, but it has to be contextual and historical. So, in many modern political uh, theorization, you see a, a deeper or a critical engagement with the contextual issue and explain it in historically. So, it is no longer a kind of abstract discipline, but it is very much contextual and historical. So, it tries to explain or theorize concepts such as uh, liberty, freedom, equality in a contextual and historical manner and not in an apolitical or a contextual manner in the abstract sense. It is true that political theory overlaps with political philosophy, ideology and political thought and that is a kind of ambiguity between uh, the uh, domain of political theory and such domains like political ideology or political philosophy and even political thought. However, a degree of generality, normative concerns, question of state and political power, individual and community remain some of the major concerns of political theory. So, political theory basically deals with the idea of uh, providing certain systemic tools, methods and approaches to understand, explain politics, how to understand state, political power, individual, community, their relationship with the state and power and so on that remain central themes in political theory. Unlike political ideology, it does not aspire to capture the state power, but it does allow the resources and discursive terrain to not only make sense of the political, but also to transform it. So, political theory in itself do not aspire to capture state power and things like that, but it does provide the concepts, the ideas, uh, the discursive uh, terrain where you develop new sensibilities, new set of values which leads to transformation and change in the political structure in the society. So, if you remember major events in modern times say French revolution or US revolution has that discursive terrain where new values, new set of concepts enables the political actors to not just understand the existing political structure, but also to transform it. Similarly, in Indian uh, national movement, the political discourse had certain concepts, certain ideas which enables many actors to understand the uh, colonial rule, the injustices that is a uh, result of that colonial rule and how to fight it. So, political theory provides those uh, discursive uh, normative terrain where it enables the individual or the actors to make sense of politics, but also transform it and that makes the political theory a very uh, fascinating discipline to study. So, now to conclude, we can revisit some of the points which I have been discussing throughout uh, uh, these uh, lectures that political theory is interdisciplinary in its approaches and methods. So, there is no uh, singular one dominant approach and methods in political theory, it is uh, genuinely interdisciplinary and there is no one dominant methods of analysis. Issues and concerns of political theory is both normative and explanatory. So, it just cannot be explanatory and descriptive, but it must also have normative contemplative aspect to it. Significance of political theory lies not only in its explanation and analysis of empirical or practical world, but also in its contribution in helping us form better judgments about political issues. So, the task of political theory is not just to explain or analyze the political world, but also enables the individual to form better judgments, better opinions about political issue. It also provides normative terrains to not only discuss and explain the political, but also to transform it, the point we have just discussed. So, political theory is in a sense combination of philosophical analysis of principles and empirical understandings of political processes and structure. So, it combines political philosophy which deals with the normative questions like what ought to be done, what should be done with the empirical issues and predicaments in the real 
world. So, political theory tries to combine. So, it derives a lot of uh, ideas, concepts, uh, normative concerns from political philosophy or political thought, but it engages with uh, the practical empirical worlds and tries to provide some kind of balance between the uh, political philosophy and political thought on the one hand and the real empirical practical world on the other. So, it is both normative as well as descriptive. So, it describes, but it also helps us understand that description and how uh, one should also change or transform it if the existing structure is not just, it is not better. So, it is also intrinsically hermeneutics and critical enterprise which we have discussed in the first slide. So, uh, the world of political is indeterminate complex and layers. So, the understanding of politics is not just a simple uh, task, but it is very complex, deeply contested. So, as I said that many of the concepts, understanding or interpretation of politics, political issues or concepts are inherently contested and that inherently contested nature of politics makes uh, the understanding of politics in Indian society a very uh, uh, rigorous exercise because of the complexities and also the layered understanding or explanation of the political. Political theory help us to understand that diverse or contested nature of politics and then accordingly form opinion and participate in it if one is so interested. So, it is partly cooperative and partly uh, conflictual that is the nature of politics political theory help us understand and explain it. So, that is the basic uh, task of political theory to understand this indeterminate, complex and layered nature of politics, which is partly cooperative, but also partly conflictual and how to make sense of that political theory help us in doing that. So, concepts and terms in political theory are essentially contested, the point we have been discussing over uh, these lectures. So, political theory explains us how a concept is related to and different from other concepts. So, for example, the relationship between equality and liberty, whether it is the conflictual or it can be mutually uh, combined. So, is the question of justice. Uh, so, liberty, equality and justice, they all are interrelated or they are different from each other. So, political theory in a sense help us understand these concepts the essentially contested nature of these concepts, but also we can develop a judgment or understanding about the inner connections of uh, these concepts and that ultimately help us to understand the conflictual and also the cooperative nature of politics, which is very complex and layered. So, the role of political theory is to uh, help us understand and explain these natures uh, of the political and how also to uh, transform it. Uh, so, that is all in today's lecture and I hope you uh, must have enjoyed this course. Uh, do write to us about your comments and give your feedback. We will be happy to respond to it and also use it to improve this course further. So, thank you all. Thanks for being with us, listening to us. Uh, thank you. Thank you all.